Hey everyone, Matt Hoban here, I'm back. Today we'll be continuing on the topic of instructing group exercise sessions. So if I've never met a group before ever, you know, they're all standing in front of me, I'll ask some pretty basic questions just to get a background of where they're at. And I might start from basically top to toe. So I might say, hey guys, has anyone got a neck injury? You know, stand over here for a sec. Has anyone got a shoulder injury? Stand over here. If anyone got a back injury, stand over here. If anyone's got sort of like a pelvis or, you know, over here, we can just start, start to break down where everyone's at. What if bad knees, bad ankles? And I can start to ask the groups slowly, you know, what's wrong with your knee? What's wrong with your back? So I can start to see where everyone's at with their session. It's just, it's critically important that we do these things. If there's a group and you're on the hop and you've got to get it done quick, I find that a great way, great quick way to get to the bottom of everyone's issues. Uh, and it gives me instant feedback of where everyone's at. What you want to be doing is just become amazing people watchers, okay? So from the, from the minute these people start walking towards you, start dissecting them. Start looking at their posture, start looking where their necks are sitting, are their shoulders back, are their shoulders rounded, you know, are they limping? Look at every little aspect of all of them, pick them mentally to pieces, okay? They, it, it, it's amazing the feedback that you can get for just looking at someone's posture, body language, how they stand when they're standing still, are they shifting to one side? You can, you can pick up on numerous things just without even asking a question. The way you can observe people in their warm-up is literally start asking questions, basic questions, even down to how was your weekend, how are the kids going, you know, do, you know, how's your husband, how's your wife, and if they're part way through a warm-up and they can't string a sentence together, for example, if they're uh, short, of, short of breath, missing words, that's a great great sign of where their cardiovascular fitness is at. You know, if they're on a rower and they're all rounded out, you can sort of see that their rhomboids and their lats might be weak already. Uh, there's, there's great cues like those where you can see where people's postural strength's at, where their cardiovascular endurance is at, not even asking them you know, questions about those areas. Things I'm monitoring throughout the session for my clients are you know, there could be their skin colour. Have they gone pasty white all of a sudden in a session? Are they sweating? Is the sweat gone cold? You know, things like that. Are they feeling dizzy? I'm constantly asking questions like that. They could look really flushed and like abnormally red in the face. So, you know, they could be really overheated. How's their attention span? Are they starting to just look elsewhere? Are they glancing down at their phone? Are they not enjoying the session anymore? Is something on their mind that's detracting away from their, their session or their technique? You know, look, look for postural cues. You know, is one shoulder dropped? Is, is a hip dropped? Are they starting to shift in a squat? under fatigue, there's lots and lots of feedback cues that you can look for without even talking to them. But you know, if you are talking to them, are they short of breath? Are they huffing and puffing? Can they string a sentence together? Great, great cues that'll give you untold feedback as to where the client's at in the session. So if clients are showing signs and symptoms of feeling dizzy or they've gone pasty white, firstly I'll ask them, are they okay? And if they do say no, I'll, I'll let them lie down with their legs elevated for 30 seconds, you know, just get a bit of blood back in their heads. I'll say when, they, when you do get up, get up slowly. You know, if they're really flushed in the face, give them a sip of water, tell them to go stand near a fan, let them cool down for a while. These are simple things like, you know, it might only take 15, 20 seconds of them doing that and they've got a second lease on life. You know, if they're highly distracted, I'll ask, is everything okay? You know, you'll see you're glancing over there, is there something you're specifically looking at? Just to, just to keep their mind, you know, on track. And if they're really, really short of breath, you know, I'll say, like, are you okay? You're not feeling dizzy, you're not feeling woozy. If they say, you know, I'm all, all good, just working hard, well, I'll let them keep going. But if I can see they're visibly, you know, ha haven't got air in, I'll say, look, just give yourself a 20 second spell and then jump back in. There's a fine line, everyone, between being like a commando style boot camp trainer where you're just flogging people regardless of where they're at and the the nice the nice guy you know who lets people get away with absolute murder you've got to you've got to understand the person what their characteristics are it might not take session one or session two it could even take five sessions with someone to get to know what makes them tick and who they are but the signs and symptoms are, are very I, th I believe and you you'll experience that they, they are obvious like if someone is white as a ghost and and vacant in their eyes you, you've got to stop them. You've got to let, let them sit down, lie down. You know, if someone's just says, oh, I'm feeling a bit dizzy, 
you know, let them go for a couple more reps. Let them see how they go. That might just be a little phase they're going through and they can push through. If someone's sweating profusely, well, good. I hope they are in the session. But if they're sweating abnormally, you know, if they're, you know, really doing it tough and their, their face is like a beetroot, you know, there's a big difference. And it's just, it takes that little bit of experience with the particular person to know, but always watch out for it. Because a lot of people, you know, there's a saying, if you give an inch, they'll take a mile. So people will always be trying to look at getting the easy way out. So don't let them get away with murder. But on the same token, don't be, uh, don't be silly about it and just try and, you know, flog people for the sake of it. So everyone, when you first start out in this industry, you might not have a whole heap of equipment at your ex uh, disposal to, to progress various exercises. So let's take the squat, for example, when you're first starting out and you've got to take that exercise and make it harder. The, the, the variables that I want you to look at are, you know, the tempo of the movement. Can we make it slower? Can we bring them down slower under tension? Or could we make it faster? Could we add more reps in? Could we go into a plyometric version of the exercise? You know, could we start doing some, some jump squats or some, you know, some holds under tension? But I, I find one of the best ways to progress a squat, just so simply, is taking the tempo into a slower tempo. So e.g., you know, it might be 20 squats where every single rep is up for one, no pause down for three, no pause. And let me tell you, by 20 reps, that's, that's a leg burner. Another exercise where we can progress without any equipment whatsoever is the walking lunge. There's a, multiple ways to do this. And again, you know, tempos, rest breaks, uh, and even the plyometric version. The jumping lunge is a fantastic one for any client that can go into that territory. But again, the, the slow tempos on the way down in a lunge, you know, if you're descending for three seconds, by the time you do 5, 10 or 15, even 20 rep, uh, lunges, it's uh, a significant leg burner. Push-up is, uh, is a cool exercise to progress. Once you actually got the client with decent technique in the push-up, it's actually an exercise that requires a bit of technique. The slow tempo, the tempo is a big one. You know, down under three second tension, four second tension, five second tension, it's a chest burner. And then doing the plyometric push-up with even add a little clap in there or different hand positions. It could be wider push-up, closer push-up, staggered hand push-up, pike push-up. There's so many variables with the push-up that um, you know before you're even looking at dumbbells, you can have a whole heap of fun with it. The sit-up is a movement that is progressed with, without too much drama. You can obviously, as the person's getting more you know, conditioned to the, to the sit up that you've prescribed. We can add, you know, significantly more reps in. We can slow it down. We can start doing partial reps. We can go down to a certain level, hold, 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 come up. So again, that's sort of a, about the tempo and the timings. We can reduce rest breaks between sets. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of options there. If I had two five kilo weights doing shoulder press, the, the, the simplest way to increase the intensity or progress that is to add more repetitions in. You know, if they're absolutely fatiguing at 10 reps, I can give them a little spot so they can get to 15 reps. Or the, the time under tension. So if they're going up for one second, bring it down for three seconds. Not many people really use tempo. So I find if you can use tempo, slowing things down or speeding things up, it's a fantastic way to progress an exercise. The best way to, to create group cohesion, I think, is for you as the trainer to take the time to get to know each and every single person in that group. Who they are, what they do, what their background is, and start to create a scenario and a feeling where everyone's part of something. You know, they're, they're part of a little family, a little tribe, a little group. Everyone gets to know each other. You've introduced everyone to everyone. Everyone knows what everyone's husband's name is, who, what their kids are. That you've created that vibe where you can have a, a lot of banter, a lot of fun. It's, it's. I think it's critically important that you, you do take that time to create that cohesion amongst the, the group. So they don't. That it's not a bunch of four or five strangers. You know, you don't want after three or four sessions everyone to still be awkward, not knowing each other. You want everyone to come in, even if for whatever reason that you're five minutes behind schedule, that they can stand there 
and by the time that you've entered the group, they're having a laugh already. But you're going to create that. You're the, you're the catalyst to create that. So find out all the little things about them and then start to, to get them to know each other really well. And that's that's creates amazing cohesion. So the way I'd create cohesion if it's just a one-off session, no one knows each other, is to do it on the hop. So while everyone's exercising, I'll walk around and I probably wouldn't put people on the spot by going, hey, what's your name? I don't think people like to be embarrassed or made the center of attention. That's just my experience. But if I can just sort of, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, just get up beside them, ask them who they are, get to know them, and then I might say, oh, you know, for example, you know, Sarah's a, a secretary as well, you know, and so's uh, Jimmy's a secretary as well. Get to get a little bit of bond in the session on the hop by asking people questions one on one and then you can start to tie it all in as they're exercising. I've had to deal with conflict in sessions on numerous occasions. It can get ugly sometimes and you'd be a bit foolish to think it's not going to happen. Not everyone gets along. Everyone has different opinions and you know you don't want to start talking about curly topics of politics and religion in your session. You just want to have fun but when and if conflict arises it's your role as the trainer to diffuse it rapidly so you can do it by keeping it light-hearted by having a little bit of uh, a humorous approach to it and sort of get so, you know but at the end of the day probably one of the simplest ways to do it is just split the two apart have them one person training at one side of the, the circuit the other at the other side of the circuit and just keeping an eye on them you know, at the end of the day, I don't think it's going to get too crazy. I've never had anyone that's actually gone to fist fights or anything, but yeah, there's been heated, heated words. It's human nature. It's going to happen. People might be sleep deprived. They might have had a rough day with bosses or kids or husbands and wives, and they're not in their best state of mind. So just be mindful, be empathetic, and uh, read the play.